Oh, okay. So this is a 6700, right? Broken Correct. down into the two main boards. And you said earlier that the difference between this, the new the new 6400, 6600 series and these older designs is that these are the two main boards where everything is as opposed to multiple smaller boards in the, the new models. That's right. So okay. what you're looking at here uh, is you have our PA board and then what we call our TR, TRX board, so our TRX. transmit and receive board. Got it. Uh, so effectively you have kind of some antenna connectors. These are our um, you know, 100 watt SO239 connectors. Uh, you also have some BNC inputs here. Uh, we have some front end filtering. Uh, these are pre-selectors. Um, and then uh, it runs into our digital section. So this shield here houses our digital section of the radio. Uh, so there's a high speed A to D converter inside the box. Uh, and then you have an FPGA and a processor in the box. So these two chip coolers cover the FPGA and the processor. So we have uh, an FPGA, which is, stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. And what that does is it, it's a basically programmable hardware. Okay. And uh, the benefit of that is hardware can kind of do uh, multi-threading. It can process multiple things simultaneously, mm -hmm. which allows it to uh, crunch a whole bunch of information at the same time. So that's really important because in this radio in particular, we're sampling at 245 mega samples per second. Right. So that's basically you know, following all of HF at the same time. Right. right. Uh, so uh, once it's done going through the FPGA, it goes over to the processor, which is um, doing things like modulation, demodulation. It's, um, it's also uh, handling our DSP, like our noise blinker, noise reduction. Uh, pretty much all, uh, most of the other processes that the radio does. And then it goes to our Ethernet connector. So uh, the Ethernet connector on the back, uh, the only thing coming out of that jack are IP protocols that are very lightweight for command and display. And so this is really important when we get to talking about our, our, soft our technology called SmartLink, which is our remote software. Yes. And so um, it's very important to keep the data going out of that very lightweight so that um, you're, you're not overloading uh, on bandwidth on uh, a network. Um, so on the transmit board here, you see our antenna tuner, our transmit filters. Uh, these are our transistors here. And uh, pretty much that's, that's the configuration of the radio uh, from a high level, at least. I really am, I told you this offline, I really am impressed that your power connector is a set of Anderson power poles. Yeah, that's pretty non. -st I mean, that's that's pretty standard that anybody can use, and it's pretty non-standard for a radio manufacturer to actually use a standard connection like that. That's so, right. We adopted so. that when we moved to the six thousand series. Okay. Um, it was something that uh, I think it was really becoming popular around that time, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we felt like it was a really good uh, solid connection mechanism and. Um, our customers have been really pleased with that. Oh, that yeah, was a really I'm sure. Good move. And but um, what gauge wire comes with? The, I know that um, uh, oh, when we were over there in the manufacturing mm -hmm. plant, um, it showed that you know, of course, 13.8 volts, and it's a 25 right. amp circuit on the right. back, which you can't see this right now because the case isn't on. Right. It says that above the connector. So mm -hmm. what what gauge wire comes with? I that? can't remember exactly. I want to say it's 12 gauge. But I can't 12 remember. gauge. Okay. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Well, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. But I mean. Easy enough to get a hold of. You could definitely mm -hmm. build drone if, oh, you, needed, sure, if you needed one that was a lot longer or something. Yeah, like it's, that. Good. it's readily available. Okay, cool. So, when we move to the newer models, the 6400 and the 6600, the design form factor of the chassis was actually driven by primarily by the Maestro uh, design. So, uh, we actually ended up with a taller chassis, um, and so that really drove a lot of the design. But one, one of the other key criteria that we were looking for was to uh, chop up those boards into smaller subsections. So those two boards, you know, you can imagine if we were to ever have to replace one, would be <laughs> quite expensive uh, to do. Quite a bit going on on the, one right. of those boards and that other one. So there are a number of advantages to chopping them up. It's a lot easier to manufacture. It'll be, uh, it's easier to um, repair because you can do kind of gold board swaps, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, what you notice inside the unit here, uh, you have the same, all the same components effectively, uh, but broken up. So right here you have our A to D converters. Uh, this runs into um, our FPGA, uh, and then uh, comes over here to the central processing board. So the CPU is under this shield here. Um, 
of the PA side is kind of broken up uh, into layers over here. So you have um, our, our PA and transistors are down here on top as our ATU. Uh, these are extended transmit filters, so this is an option in either our radios, which allows you to add filtering for out-of-band operation for things like uh, MARS or SHARES. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an additional option. Um, and then uh, the pre-selectors are actually underneath this section here. Uh, and uh, another thing that we gained by moving to this form factor is uh, this nice large six inch fan. So this is just a standard uh, CPU fan, uh, or ch CPU uh, computer chassis fan, mm -hmm. really. And um, these are made in you know, the millions of quantities. Oh, They're yeah. high, uh, high reliability, uh, low revolutions, um, so that allows us to keep uh, a quieter fan. Um, they're also even rubber mounted to you know, further insulate it from vibrations from the metal and that sort of thing. So in, in this uh, configuration, we don't have the chip cooler fans anymore, uh, and we only have uh, a single fan for cooling the entire unit. So uh, it's much quieter and more efficient in that way. So That fan's actually running right now, I just noticed. That's right. You can't even hear it. Yep. It's totally quiet. That's actually that's cool. Right. And the uh, and this is a 6600 because did you talk about those two boards over there on the side? Yes. Yeah, so okay. uh, we talked about the A to Ds. Now uh, in the 6400, there's only one A to D converter. Um, that means that it uh, that's the analog to digital converter. That uh, is what we're using to take the RF in from the radio and digitize it for the radio to consume. So uh, the the 6400, while it has two receivers and those can be placed on any band. Um, it can only use one antenna at a time. So notice on the back of the radio here, you have uh, multiple antenna inputs. Um, but uh, the ADD converters is what determines how many of those you can use at the same time. Gotcha. So since the 6600 has two, you can actually digitize the RF from two different antenna sources at the same time. So you could have, uh, you could be receiving on both of these 100-watt uh, transceive ports or you could use one of the 100-watt uh, transceive ports and a receive-only antenna input, um, uh, any combination thereof. So that's, that's an advantage to the 6600 is that you can uh, utilize two antennas at the same time. And those bottom two BMCs down there are for transverters. That's right. So we could do like a um, 2 meter or 220 or 440 transverter and mm -hmm. operate during one of the contest days for 50 megahertz and above sideband. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, and it, once, you, once you put them in line, you add them in in the software, and it just shows up as another band. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Perfect. And will it recognize anything above two meters? Uh, so, sure, yeah, as long as you can, you put a transverter in line that can handle it, yeah. Will it, auto, will it automatically come up and say 1.25 meters, or do you have to program uh, it with You program name? it in. You, okay. you enter the IF frequency and the low frequency, okay. and uh, I'm, that's a little bit outside of my, that's all right. my uh, <laughs> typical operation, but um, it's very simple to set up, and then once you set it up, it just shows up in an additional band. Awesome. Okay. Cool. All right, so I want to thank you for letting me come down here. We got some really cool stuff of all your current uh, 6000 series. It's just called Series 6000, right? Yeah, the, the, the Flex 6000 Flex series. Flex 6000 yeah. series. So all the different radios from Flex down here in Austin, Texas, which uh, the shadows are getting kind of harsh out here right now, but that's okay. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. Got the building in the background. So um, come see them at, uh, they're going to be at Hamcom in June, but before that, come see them in Dayton. That's be right. a lot of uh, uh, huge presence at Dayton last year. I assume you'll have that again this year. That's right. We'll have a very big booth there. We also have two banquet dinners. So we have one both on Thursday and Friday night right. of, of uh, Dayton. So be sure to register. You can go to flexradio.com to register there. Perfect. Awesome. So, well, again, thanks a lot. I yeah, appreciate coming absolutely. out here. It's always good to get uh, whatever's new in amateur radio, which is kind of my tagline. So yeah. that's definitely some new stuff in there, especially with uh, all the uh, SmartLink stuff. So that's right. Good, man. Well, hey, thanks again. Yep. I really appreciate yeah. you coming Thank you by. very much. Okay, right. sounds good.